done drawing their picture yet? Who's done? Still working? Okay. Anyone done with their drawing yet? Yeah. I'm asking because someone's gonna need to draw it up on the board. I can do it. Draw it on the board. Uh, use the chalkboard, that far right one. Is there white chalk over there? Yes. Cool. There's a tiny nub and barely worthy of the name, but it'll cool. work. Cool. There's more over there if you here if you need it. So we have that datum. Um, 80 PSIG. Would this be PG1? Yeah, you can say it's PG. 80 PSI. Yes, and then it's asking what's the gauge pressure at the compressor. So how's about you do like a PG2 with a question mark. What is that up top? I also have in my picture drawn a little line coming down the shaft to show, okay, we have the compressor on top and our lines are going down to maybe a jack leg or something else down there. And there's this difference in elevation between where we're working and where the, the compressor is up top. Perfect, thank you. Okay. Is that what you want? Yeah, hopefully y'all came up with something like that. We're gonna keep drawing on that. First step be here. Um, I would, uh, figure out the other, I guess we know 14.7 and 
seven is what barometric. Mm -hmm. So I'd use those uh, equations we just learned to work up and find the barometric pressures. Yeah, good first step. Let's use those equations. Okay, so we have our log. Okay, and we're gonna call that the pressure two barometric. And we now have two elevations. We have a 3,000 and we're at 6,000. Okay, so we need to keep those track or apart from each other. So we'll call this the pressure two barometric at the 6,000 level, or 6,000 feet. So that's how I'm describing that variable. Okay, that's gonna equal the log of our pressure one barometric. And you said that we know the sea level and that level we're gonna say is at zero. So this is a zero I'm putting at the end here. And then let's finish off that equation. We've got minus 0 0.0000 and we're using the imperial units. So that would be 157 times H, that distance, okay? I'm going to do a subscript 1, H1, because we're going to have another difference. Okay, so let's do this. Let's break this down. So our pressure 2, barometric at 6,000. We don't know what that is, but that's our pressure at that 6,000 feet up. Our first pressure at zero, we do know what that is. That's that 14.7. It's kind of known. We know that. Okay, so we can plug in here. If we know our H1 is that difference between the two, so that 6,000 feet minus zero feet. Okay, so whatever these pressures, barometric pressures are at, which is at 6,000 and at one feet, we're subtracting that. So our H1 is 6,000. Okay, so let's go ahead and solve this out. If we do some math, we all love math. Our pressure at location two, barometric for 6,000, that is going to be 10 to the power of our log of 14.7 minus 0 0.0000157 times 6,000. Okay, solving out my top equation for my pressure to barometric at 6,000. I'm plugging in and I end up getting 11.7 PSI. So that is my barometric pressure at 6,000. So I have 11, so my pressure barometric up here is 11.7 PSI. Okay, so I know my barometric pressure at the pump or at my compressor, but I want to know it also at my working. So I need to know that barometric so I can convert to the absolute. So let's fill in the gap here and do the same exact thing for 3,000 feet. Okay, so log, we're gonna name this one. It's still the second height of the barometric pressure, but we're now looking at the 3,000. So I'll subscript this as 3,000 feet up to label that. 
point. And then we have the log of that first barometric pressure. Again, I'm going from the datum of sea level because I know that. So that's my first pressure one, and that's a subscript zero. And then subtracting this other term. Minus 0 0.00001578 times H2. I got a different H here, so keep those separate. Okay, so in this case, our H2, we're now looking at the zero, or sea level, and the 3,000. So the difference between these two levels is that 3,000. So 3,000 feet minus zero, which in our case is 3,000. And then we're using the same P1B from before because we know that. So that's all you matter. Okay, do some math. So P2B, the second barometric pressure we're looking at, which is at 3,000, that is equal to 10 to the power of log times 14.7 minus 0 0.00001578 times 3,000. You should get 13.2 PSI. We have our barometric, we have a gauge pressure. We have these two, what can we find next? Absolute pressure. Absolutely, let's do that. Whoa, okay, so the required absolute pressure Okay, that was that first set of equations we wrote. So I'm going to say, okay, the P pressure absolute at 3,000 is going to equal to 13.2, that barometric we found, plus the gauge or the required, which is 80, looking at our math there. We get 93.2 PSI absolute, PSIA for that. Set that down. So pressure absolute is 93.2 PSIA. Okay, so we know the absolute over there. How can we get to the pressure we need up top? Use the log equation again. Yes, use the log equation again. And for that, we can use our subscripts with A's into that, because they're interchangeable in that same equation. Let's do it. This pen is also dying on me. Okay, so let's do it again. We've got the log. We're going to do the pressure, second pressure absolute at 6,000. So I'm going to find out what the absolute pressure is up here, which is at 6,000. 
and that's going to equal to the log of the absolute pressure at now this level. Okay, we don't need to use sea level anymore. We found out what our absolute pressure is at our workings, where our jack legs are. So let's plug that in. So we've got the log, the pressure one we're using is the absolute at 3,000 feet up. Subtract 0 0.0000157, and now we're gonna have an H3. There's a difference, because we're doing different places we're looking at now, so H3. Okay, what's H3 in this case? What? 3,000, yes, because we have 6,000 minus 3,000. Our pressure at 2 minus our pressure at 1. So we get 3,000 feet for that height or difference. Okay, so pressure 2, absolute, at the 6,000 level. We got 10 to the power of log times what we have here, that's 93.2 minus 0 0.0000157 times 3,000. Cool. Sweet. So far so good? Solve that we get 83.7 psi with the subscript a because we're an absolute. Let's put that over here. So we've got p absolute up top at 83.7. That's psi a. Okay, we still need to get to gauge. What's our last step here? Yep. <laughs> Go back to the first equation. Okay, so our pressure, absolute at 6,000. We girl the pressure barometric at 6,000 plus the pressure gauge at 6,000, so we're going to subtract the barometric from absolute to get the gauge pressure that we want to read. Okay. Plug in what we have, solve for PG. Pressure gauge at 6,000, we need to read is 72.0. What questions do you have? instruments or our equipment we read 80 cool we go up top and this says 72 that's actually really good that's what we want okay so if we're up top and we see 72 on our air compressor we know we're good and they have what they need underground yeah that doesn't make any sense <laughs> I'm so, like i guess just the concept of it to me does not add up doesn't add up i don't know like it doesn't lie you have like a low gauge pressure at a low atmospheric pressure, and then you're going down at a higher atmospheric pressure, and you want a higher gauge pressure, and it seems like it's backwards. Well, gauge pressure is what you're reading the person. <laughs> but that's a good question. Like, how to explain that? 
Um, and like, if you want, I mean, we found that like the absolute pressure inside the like the system needs to be ninety three point two. I don't know. I guess it doesn't make a lot of sense that. We don't have a higher pressure when you go down, no. Mm -hmm. Oh, like just from the column. Yeah, usually when you get to about 500 feet, you want to start thinking about these equations. And then on Wednesday, we're going to talk about line losses, so how long your line is. So what this is 3,000 feet long. At that point, you're going to get losses just due to the length. And we're going to do calculations with that taken into account. Because, um, yeah, at about 500 feet, you want to start thinking about your line losses. Um, or even like 500 feet elevation, think about how that affects your system. Yeah. So you need a lot higher gauge pressure than that in the real world, because you're going 3,000 feet. Gauge in pressure? This, uh, well, you need a higher gauge pressure at the top in order to have that gauge pressure at the bottom, because you're going 3,000 feet on that line. Yes, and you usually have pressure gauges, like in this case, for the air compressor I'm using for a jack leg at 80, I probably have like 200 PSI gauge, like you can go up to that. Well, we have a couple minutes. If y'all want to head out or hang out, that's cool. Uh, thanks for all for the air compressors with us. Yeah. Do you see significantly higher loss in elevation change or in Ooh, good question. I think it's usually line losses for friction. Unless you're pumping upwards, right? Like, imagine if you had a compressor at the bottom of this one. More, more realistically, at the bottom of the hill. But like, let's say it's at the bottom of the shaft. Mm -hmm. Like let's say you're like shaft where you have like a thousand degree ball. Well, air is less dense than like a solid. Like when you talk about slurries, it's going to pump up. Right, it's still a solid.